Let's take a look at a second example of how to use matrix, matrix multiplication via linear combination of column vectors in order to do work on a modeling matrix. So let's say that we started with a general four by four modeling matrix. So this is some matrix that came up in a modeling context. In this case, we'll just use the symbols as a general approach. Once we have this thing, let's suppose that we want to swap columns two and three of matrix A and leave the rest of the matrix untouched. So, so we want to use matrix matrix multiplication to swap those two columns and then leave columns one and four exactly where they were to begin with. Remember, we're going to develop four different versions of matrix matrix multiplication. This video and the last two were all about doing matrix matrix multiplication via linear combinations of the columns of a modeling matrix. The intuition I want to encourage you to develop is when we have the modeling matrix on the left hand side, and we're doing algebraic work using right matrix multiplication, we chunk the data into columns. We break A into columns, we break X into columns, and we break B into columns. Remember though that another way to say this is that if we want to do algebraic work on the columns of our modeling matrix, then we're going to multiply that matrix on the right hand side by an algebraic worker. Figuring out what the exact form of the matrix X is an art and we're going to spend a lot of time for the rest of our course together talking about how to get special matrices to do work on the columns of the matrix A. In this example, we want to swap columns two and three and leave the rest of the modeling matrix untouched. To do that, we're going to use a transposition matrix. If you need a recall on what the transposition matrix is, go back and watch our previous videos on that subject. Specifically, to swap columns two and three, we're going to use the transposition matrix P subscript two, three. And remember, since we want to manipulate the columns of A, we're going to multiply A on the right by that transposition matrix. So A times P two, three. Remember, A is a general four by four matrix. P two, three will also be four by four because we're trying to manipulate a four by four matrix to begin with. Remember that this permutation matrix is the four by four identity matrix where we swap columns two and three, which is exactly what we see here. The four by four identity matrix, but column two goes to column three and column three goes to column two. There is P two, three. For you viewers at home, remember that the entire point of this is not to watch me do the work. It's to do your work yourself. Pause the video and see if you can confirm that what I I'm saying here is actually true. So do all of the work for yourself in the same way we did in the last example. That's what we're going to do in this video. Do you really need me to do it for you or can you do it for yourself? My belief is that you're genius and that you can do better math than I can. So go do it. Of course, I'm not going to leave you out in the dry. I'm going to guide you through it and I'm going to show you the way that I actually write my math in my own notebooks so that I can create a second brain, as Henry Fan would say, a brain outside of myself that I can look back at years from now and remember in complete detail everything that I need to know about this operation. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate column one of our output. So this is going to be column one of A multiplied by the transposition matrix that we've constructed. Remember that we can kind of bring A through that column operator. So this is A times the first column of our transposition matrix. The entry by entry definition of A is completely general. And then the first column of this matrix was one, zero, zero, zero. Since we're doing right matrix multiplication by columns, we partition A into columns. We partition the transposition matrix into columns. Now we have a matrix column vector product, which if we remember means that we pair this first entry of our vector with the first column of A. Then we add that to the second entry times the second column, the third entry times the third column, the fourth entry times the fourth column. Three of those entries were zero, which means they get annihilated. They literally just disappear. And then we pick off one times the first column. One times the first column is the first column. So the output here, which is going to be stored in the first column of our matrix B, is column one of matrix A. In other words, the first column remains the same. That's exactly what we wanted. One thing that I'm going to note, the reason that this is identical has to do with the fact that this is a one and not a two. One is a very special number. It's the only number we can multiply by and not change it. It's the multiplicative identity. So that's something to note as we move forward. Let's take a look at column two of our output, which is column two of the product A times P23. That of course is A times column two of P23, which entry by entry is A. And then remember that column two of P23 is going to be column three of the four by four identity matrix. In other words, it's going to be zero, zero, one, zero. Since we're doing matrix vector multiplication via linear combinations, we chop A into columns and then pair each column with the entries of the second column of our transposition matrix. So here we say zero times the first column of A plus zero times the second column of A plus one times the third column plus zero times the fourth column. And then of course we're storing this output in the second column of B. 
but here we have three zero values, which means all of those go away, and I have one times the third column, which means the second column of my output now gets the third column of my original matrix A, which is what we wanted to do, right? We wanted to swap columns two and three. So column two becomes column three, and column three becomes column two. That's not a coincidence here. The fact that this one was in position three means I'm picking off the third column and leaving everything else untouched in this combination. One thing I wanna show you that I'm really serious about is when I do my math, I actually line up the equal signs and this is a chain of expressions. I also am sure to kind of track all of the steps and then not only do symbolic mathematics, but also do verbal descriptions of what I'm doing. Uh, my notebooks actually look like this. I don't use permanent markers, I use just regular pens. I'm using permanent markers for the videos that we're doing, but the point of the matter is I'm literally thinking, what if I were to use this math 10 years from now and I don't look at it between now and then? How can I make my work easy enough so that I can follow my own work and really make it valuable for myself? So it's a portfolio of learning. I challenge you at home to do the same thing. This is really precious time. Make this work count. Imagine that you wanted to use a lot of the stuff that we're doing five, 10, 15 years from now, and you won't look at it between now and then, how could you write your notes in such a way that it's almost trivial when you look back at it? Let's keep going. So now we're gonna get column three of the output, which is column three of A times P23. Of course, we say that that's A times column three of our transposition matrix. When we go down to the entry by entry form, here is A in general form. And remember that column three was actually column two of the four by four identity matrix. In other words, it's zero, one, zero, zero. When we do that linear combination, we pair zero with the first column, one with the second column, zero with the third column, zero with the fourth column, add all the results together, all the zeros disappear, and what we've done is we've picked off one times the second column. So here, this is the second column of A, but we're storing that in the third column of our output, right? Because of the way that this works. The third column of our output is A times the third column of this matrix. This transposition matrix has this particular value, which means we've done that swap that we want to accomplish, right? Let's put this example in the coffin. Notice that I've actually written out every single example. And when I was doing this, I did it from the top of my head. I didn't look back. I was testing myself every time, right? The point of an example is not rote memorization. It's brain training. And the more active recall, the more deliberate practice, the more I can test my memory while I'm doing the example, the stronger my command of that example will be. So I hope you're developing that habit at home. Remember, you are genius, and these practices are designed to strengthen that genius. All right, column four of the output is column four of A times P23, which of course is A times column four of P23, which if we write the entry by entry form, here is a general four by four matrix. The fourth column of this transposition matrix is just zero, 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 one. Remember, that is the identity matrix where the second and third column are swapped. So column four is untouched in the identity matrix. When we do that matrix column vector multiplication, zero times the first column plus zero times the second column plus zero times the third column plus one times the fourth column, all of these disappear because we're multiplying by zero and then we're picking off one times the fourth column, which means the fourth column of my output is identical to the fourth column of the original modeling matrix A, which means the last column stays the same. Let's combine all these results together. If we have a four by four modeling matrix A, and we wanna swap columns two and three and leave everything else in A untouched, remember if we're gonna manipulate the columns, we're gonna use right matrix matrix multiplication by an algebraic worker. To swap columns, we use transposition matrices, particularly P23 in this case, and then we'll produce our output B. What we've just seen by all the work that we've done is in order to swap columns two and three, which are in orange and blue, we're going to multiply by P23. And then what ends up happening is the orange goes over to the third column. The blue comes over to the second column, which is exactly what we see. We can actually see these in the color coding that we've done here. Pink goes to pink, orange goes to orange, blue goes to blue, purple goes to purple. The locations of the non-zeros are what's important here. The non-zero in column two corresponds with the third column of our original, which means we're picking off the third column and putting in the second column. The non-zero in column three corresponds to the second column of the original, which means we're picking off the second column and putting in the third column. The non-zero in columns one and four align exactly with columns one and four of the original matrix, which is why they stay in the same position. This leads very nicely to the community challenge in this video. What if I wanted to do a general permutation? What if I wanted to take 
column one, put it in column two, column two, put it in column three, column three, put it in column four, and then column four all the way to column one, how would I do that? Or what if I wanted a different permutation? What if I wanted to take column two, put in column one, three, two, four, three, one, four, how would I do that? Play around with it, make a conjecture, use the definitions, and work from there. For those of you that want more exercises, I have those in the lesson notes. Thank you so much for your attention in this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a different version of matrix, matrix multiplication, this time using linear combination of the rows of our matrix. I'll see you there.